Hey, hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this Azure DevOps tutorial series, today let's discuss about the key concepts in Azure pipelines. Okay, so this is going to be a little theoretical video. Uh, the intention of this video is to make you understand all the key components and the key concepts that is present in Azure pipelines. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the key uh, terminologies that is frequently used in Azure pipelines and give a one liner about it. Okay, so going forward in our upcoming videos, we will discuss about all these terminologies in detail via practical sessions and try to understand much more in deeper. Okay, for now, just focus on all these concepts and I will, I'm going to give a one liner definition alone that should be more than enough for you to actually understand what we are cover, covering in this video. Okay, so in order to understand this uh, concept better, I have uh, copied a sample diagram from the Microsoft Learn website, which will uh give you, you know, key highlights about all the concepts that is present so if you look at here like we have something called trigger pipeline stage agent job script task artifact uh, you know these are the key uh, keywords that is uh, you know these, these are the keywords that is mostly used in the azure pipelines let's look at uh, how this uh, what these are and how they behave actually okay so if we look at the flow of this diagram okay that First, we have is a trigger. Okay, a trigger tells a pipeline to run. So you can imagine it as an entry point of an execution. Okay, so once a trigger is uh, actually started, and then comes our pipeline. A pipeline is made up of multiple stages. Okay, it can be either a single stage or it can have a multiple stage too. Okay, so a pipeline can be deployed to one or more environments. Uh, next, we have something called stage. A stage is a way of organizing jobs in a pipeline and each stage can have one or more jobs so you can see inside stage we have multiple jobs here okay a job can be either agent with agent or agent less two okay so here we have something in this block we have a job with an, an agent here we have an agent less job okay so a job can be either agent or agent less and then comes steps okay a step can be anything like it can be a script it can be a task you know and it is the smallest building block of the pipeline okay uh, a script is nothing but you can imagine a sample piece of code that is what we generally call a script a task is like a prepackaged script that performs an action like you can publish a build artifact you can invoke a rest api you know you can perform any such actions which which is what we call as task okay we have something called artifact artifact in general is a very vast topic we'll discuss about all these things in detail in our upcoming videos but one liner is you can imagine an artifact as a collection of files or a package um, that is that is published by a run you can imagine a maven package you can imagine a new get npm packages and all okay so this is what i want to cover as part of this particular slide which will actually give you a very high level view about all the key concepts that is present in the azure pipelines now let's look at uh, all these concepts one by one first what we have is agent okay so when uh, agent is something you can imagine it as an infrastructure for you to run all your jobs and perform all your actions okay that is what you can imagine an agent as okay if i look at the definition when your build or deployment runs system begins one or more jobs an agent is a computing infrastructure with installed agent software that runs one job at a time for example you could run on a microsoft hosted ubuntu agent okay i will show you in the azure devops site so that you will have a better understanding about what an agent is okay before going there like we will try to understand different type of agent types that is actually present in azure pipelines so first what we have is microsoft hosted agents so first uh, so it is hosted by microsoft and it is managed by microsoft next what we have is self hosted agents self hosted agent means let I mean, you can manage your own agent um, and you can host it on your VMs. Okay, it can be at an organization level or it can be at a personal level too. Next, we have something called Azure Virtual Machine Scale Set Agents. Now, this is more like a self-hosted agent only, but you have an option to auto scale it according to your requirements. Okay, so this is what we call it as Azure Virtual Machine Scale Set Agent. Now, if I go into the Azure DevOps site, um, I have created a couple of pipelines in my previous video. So I'm going to edit it. So you can see how uh, the terms here, like we have something called agent job one. Okay. It runs on an agent. So all these steps runs on an agent. Okay. So here I am just uh, running, using, uh, running a Python script in a command line. 
okay so you similarly you can add multiple steps here and run the all this run all these steps in an agent okay and you can see here we have something called agent pool under agent pool by default azure pipeline is selected it is an microsoft hosted one so we have azure pipelines uh, you can similarly you can have some other private um, azure agent pools as well you can see we have something called agent specification agent specification correct by default it is selected as windows 2019 but you can change it according to your needs so we have something called ubuntu we have uh, mac we have windows and all okay so you can change the agent specification according to your requirement if you'll go into this manage tab here under manage you can uh, you have an option to uh, enable and disable the agents like I'm currently in the agent pools. So if I go into this agent section, so you can see we have an option to enable and disable the agents in the Azure pipeline. So you can disable it here or you can enable it here. Okay, this is something I wanna show you that you have a very clear understanding about how an agent will work. Okay, now let's let's jump on to our slide. Okay. <clears throat> next we have something called approvals okay so approval is something you can imagine it as a set of validations or a, a set of checks that uh, done before a deployment runs okay so whenever you perform a deployment okay you need to do a set of validations that is what we generally call as approvals so generally they, we have something called manual approval manual approval is a common check performed to control deployment to production environment so whenever you try to push uh, whenever you try to perform a deployment to production environment manual approval is very widely used okay, this is another concept you want to understand and next we have something called artifact okay we just saw a glimpse about what is artifact in our previous diagram okay artifact is nothing but it's a collection of files or packages published by a run artifacts are made available to subsequent tasks such as distribution or deployment okay you can imagine an artifact as a um collection of file or a package like you can imagine a maven package you can imagine um a nuget package you can imagine an npm you can even imagine a python package okay so what you're doing is you you have written a custom piece of code and you wanna and combine and uh, combine and have it as a module or a package and then you can use that package to your subsequent task in your pipeline okay so that is what we generally call it as an artifact okay so as i listed down here these are the different artifact types like nuget npm maven python okay these are very widely used in azure pipelines next we have something called deployment okay this is a keyword that you might have very frequently heard in if you are in an it world okay deployment is nothing but you you have a uh, piece of code and you want to deploy it into your environment for live okay so this is what we generally call as a deployment in general terms uh, and, uh, it's, it's same in the azure pipeline world as well but here in deployments you uh, we, since we have two types of pipelines you know the deployment type may vary like for classic pipeline you know a deployment is the action of running tasks for one stage you know which can include running automated tests deploying artifacts and any other actions specified for that single stage only whereas when it comes to yaml pipelines a deployment typically uh, refers to a deployment job okay we might have we will have a deployment job which is a collection of steps and that runs sequentially against an environment where here in classic pipelines it is a nice action of running tasks for one stage whereas here in the yaml pipeline it is a collection of steps that runs that are run sequentially against an environment okay so this is the um, difference between uh, deployment in classic and yaml pipelines and next we have something called deployment group okay uh, you deployment group is again you can imagine as like an as, as you, uh, an agent pool or like an uh, um, deployment target machines okay so deployment group is a set of deployment target machines that have agents installed okay deployment group is just another grouping of agents just like an agent pool as i said like you can imagine an agent pool um, which will collect a group of agents right similarly deployment uh, you know it's you can imagine it as a, a, a collection of uh, different deployment target machines okay let me show you that even though i have not created any deployment group but you, you can have a view of how a ui looks here in under pipelines we have something called deployment groups okay so here in the deployment groups uh, so this is the basic ui uh, of deployment group so since i have not created anything it is currently empty 
but if you want to add in if you want to create any deployment group you can create a deployment group here and explore it further okay so we will see all these things in our upcoming slides upcoming videos next what we have is environment okay environment is like a, is nothing but it's a collection of uh, resources where you can uh, deploy your application okay so in real times you might have heard about like dev environment qa environment production environment and uat environment right this is again very similar to it so you can deploy to any specific specific environment that is suitable for your uh, pipeline okay so that is what we generally call as environment <clears throat> and next we have something called job okay job is like a uh, you know it's it's a collection of steps okay so a stage contains one or more jobs each job runs on an agent uh, a job represents an execution boundary of set of steps all the steps run together on the same agent okay so we have a set of sequence of steps which will run on an um, agent we saw here right and under pipelines if we go into edit mode you can see agent job one okay it, it runs on an agent it everything runs on a single agent so these are the sequence of steps which will run as part of a job okay and then we have pipeline okay i'm going to skip this because this is very widely used and we have already discussed about what pipelines and all next we have something called release okay release again this is not different from the regular uh, terminologies that we have been using in the it world release is like a uh, you know you have a set of requirements and you want to release it on a particular day okay so you have collection of requirement how how it happens in real world is say you have 10 requirements and all these 10 requirements go into a single release okay uh, similarly you might have few more, more requirements which will go in release 2 so this is more like an incremental process that will happen in your project right so similarly we have something called release in azure pipelines too right it might vary depending upon the uh pipelines that you are using so for classic pipelines a release is a set of is a version set of artifacts specified in a pipeline the release includes a snapshot of all the information required to carry out all the tasks and actions in the release pipeline such as stages tasks policies triggers and approvals and deployment actions you can create a release manually with deployment trigger or with rest api okay so there is an option of creating your release manually or with rest api too okay and then in yaml pipeline a build and release stages are in are in one multi-stage pipeline okay so do not confuse this um, uh, do not confuse with the definition i will show you practical in practical in our upcoming videos for now just understand that's a concept called release which is nothing different from the real life terminologies that we have been using in our it world okay next is run a run represents one set of execution of pipeline it collects logs associated with running the steps and results of running test okay a run is like a single execution step okay so if you if you have performed a execution that is what we generally call as a run okay um, and next we have something called script script you can imagine script as a simple piece of custom code okay so you are running you are writing some code uh, that is very um, necessary for your pipeline that is what we generally call as script next we have something called stage we saw a glimpse about what stage is in our diagram right so we call you know for example we have build stage we have qa stage we have production stage you know each and every uh, you know we can mark the separation of these uh, uh, steps that is what we generally call as a stage it's it's more like a logical boundary in a pipeline okay each uh, each stage can contain one or more jobs so build can contain multiple jobs your qa can contain multiple jobs your production can contain multiple jobs okay when you define multiple stages in a pipeline by default they run one after the other okay this is what we call as stage next we have something called step okay we already again saw a glimpse of what step is right it's the smallest building block of a pipeline it contains uh, you know, if you go here we have steps here okay a step can either be a script which is a piece of code or either it can be a task which can invoke your rest api or even publish your build artifact or any other tasks that you specify for your pipeline okay and task you know task is something but uh, it's a building block of your uh, for defining automation in your pipeline it is like a uh, pre uh, pre-planned script or a procedure that, uh, that has been abstracted with a set of inputs okay a task is as i showed you an example right a task can be anything it can invoke a rest api it can run a simple piece of python code it can even publish a build artifact it can perform any action that you wanna 
your pipeline to run <coughs> next we have something called trigger as we saw trigger is a it's, it's a kick start of the execution like it's uh, it tells your pipeline to run okay you can configure a pipeline to run upon a push to a repository okay so you can if you go here the, uh, like we have something called triggers okay it can be either scheduled it can be either on a build completion uh, the job will run okay so it can run at a specified time or when a build is completed you can trigger the job okay so this is what uh, this is another concept that is present in pipeline and finally we have something called library library is like a collection of its you can imagine a repository okay all the uh, files and all the variable groups are stored in a library okay S secure files are a way to store files and share them across pipelines okay you may need to save a set of file you may need to save a file at the devops level and then use it during build or deployment okay and then you can save the file within a library and use it whenever you need and next we have something called variable groups variable group store values and secrets that you might want to be passed into yaml pipeline or make available across multiple pipelines okay so uh, you do, do, again do not confuse uh, with all these concepts you can imagine a library as a, a repository where you store all your secure files and variable groups okay that should be more than enough for you to understand what library is if you want to explore it further we have something called variables here we have pipeline variables we have variable groups we have uh, something called options uh, where you can see all the options related to your build okay and we have history you can see the history of all the pipeline activities and all okay you can explore all this uh, you can go to the azure devops ui and just look uh, browse through all these areas okay like you can uh, uh, go into environments you can go into releases library task group deployment groups you can just explore it and get used to the terminologies because these terminologies we will be using very frequently in our upcoming videos as part of Azure Pipeline series. Okay. So that's all what I want to cover as part of this video, guys. If you have any queries, please post it into the comment section. If you like this video, please subscribe and follow my channel. Thank you.